done and in today's art lesson we are going to create three designs and we're going to use classic Mimbrae's pottery as our inspiration. The materials you will need are one piece of paper, any size will do but mine is 8 by 18 inches. You'll need a bowl or a cup, we're going to be tracing a circle. You'll need a pencil and a black sharpie or black marker pen or black uh, pen, anything that uh, will make a black mark will do. So what is Mimbrae's pottery? I only discovered Mimbrae's pottery recently when I was visiting the de Young Museum in San Francisco in Golden Gate Park. I spent the day at the art museum and really when I got home that night I thought what was my favourite thing? And I hadn't ever heard of Mimbrae's pottery before so I thought well why not research it? Um, it's always a good idea if you get the chance to go to a gallery, if there's something that appeals to you, why not that night when you get home? Take out your computer if you have one and find out all about some art that you've found, an artist or an art style or a movement. So let's look a little bit more about Mimbrae's pottery. First observation I make is that this pottery is made from clay and it's in the shape of a bowl. Some have motifs in the centre with a decorative design or pattern around the edge. Some have designs of insects, animals, birds, fish, and geometric lines. I notice many of the bowls have straight lines that travel around the edge of the bowl. And perhaps the most obvious detail to notice, they are mostly all black and white. So who made Mimbra's pottery? When were they made and where? Here's a map. Mimbra's pottery was made in the United States of America, the American Southwest in New Mexico. You can see it on the map. It is highlighted in yellow. And Mimbres is Spanish for little willow. The Mimbres were prehistoric North American people who lived along the Mimbres River. In the height of their culture between AD 1000 and 1150, so that's around a thousand years ago, the Mimbres people lived in compact Pueblo villages of adobe and masonry. Each village contained perhaps 200 people. Because of little rainfall in the area, they relied on irrigation to grow corn, maize, beans and squash. Irrigation is when you can control the amount of water given to any plants. The bowls they made were to be used. They were not made to be art pieces or displayed. A person would make a bowl and use that bowl to eat and store food. So fish are the most common subject matter in Membrae's pottery. Let's look at this bowl. It looks here like there are some cracks in the bowl. And that's exactly what they are. Archaeologists who dig up um, this type of pottery, well, archaeologists are people that study history and prehistory. They very carefully dig or excavate the ground. And sometimes they find these pottery pieces are in many different pieces. Um, it's not hard to understand that because these are over a thousand years old. So over time they have cracked in the ground with the movement of the ground. So the archaeologists very carefully piece them together so we can enjoy them and learn from them in one piece. Black and white is a very pleasing contrast. The artists also, apart from painting geometric shapes, figures and animals, they also painted motifs in the center and they had a very direct connection with the natural world around them. The motif tells a story about the maker or culture. They depict animals in their environment. Take a look at this datura blossom that is beginning to unfurl. It would seem the design on the bowl is mirroring that shape. They were really looking at their natural environment to get ideas for their designs. Now take a look at the hawk moth on the left. Really beautiful type of zigzag pattern. You can really see that be reflected in the bowl on the right hand side. Quite beautiful. Okay, let's start with our art project. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my piece of paper and you'll need your pencil and your bowl. Now my piece of paper is eight by 18 inches. So if you have paper that size, then you can do it this way. I've already drawn one circle. I'm using a regular cereal bowl as a template. 
checking it's all the way on the page. Do all the way around. Now, that's going to be our three circles that we're going to do three different designs. If you just have a regular copy paper, that's absolutely fine too. You could use that. Um, perhaps this size paper, you only fit on two designs, which is absolutely fine. Um, this size, um, this size, I'm going to use the smaller um, circumference of the boulder so it fits on. Already drawn one. You can put it next to it and carefully draw around the bottom. Okay, so that will be our um, design surface that we're going to be doing our designs on. So before we get going on our actual designs, I always like to have a little think about what I'm going to do first. I always have a scrap piece of paper on hand. So we talked about that fish are often used in membranes designs. So maybe have a little think about how you're going to draw fish if you were going to do fish. Um, there's lots of different shapes of fish. We usually have an eye. There's lots of lines in membranes designs. Really have fun with it. Maybe your fish is a bigger, more like a sunfish with a funny little mouth and more of a quite large triangle tail. Maybe there's some fins at the bottom. Again, we're going to have an eye. Maybe there's a moon shape. Think about shapes and lines. You could do some zigzags along the back. Don't forget to vary your weight of lines, thick and thin. Maybe your fish is going to be more slender and the tail more defined. So have a little think about what you're going to draw before you actually start on your main piece. Maybe you're not going to do a fish. Maybe you're going to do some type of goat or ram or something. Have a think about what animal you like to draw. Again, you don't have to draw an animal. Maybe you will actually just do some type of geometric patterns on your designs. Could be some legs sticking out. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just have fun and do some practicing. These remind me a little bit like the um, Native American pictographs you see sometimes on cave walls. Okay, um, if you're going to do some type of geometric pattern, we looked at some of the membrane uh, membranes art earlier, but if you have access to the internet, maybe you, while you're drawing some of these, maybe you could print some out. I noticed some really beautiful patterns. There was all sorts of sort of zigs and zags like this. I noticed there was parallel lines. Have a think about the distance with your parallel lines and the weight of the line. Maybe one could be really close to the other one. All adds to your art. So I'm going to start my um, final one. And I'm going to sort of make a line right on the inside of the edge. We're doing our designs in a circular shape. Um, and obviously ours are not really bowls, but we're doing, doing them in a circle shape because we are trying to mimic or get the idea that these are bowls. Up to you how you do it. Um, just have fun. You don't need to do the same as me. And uh, we can all work together and see what we come up with. I'm going to ask my two children to come and help me again. Maya and Danny, and we'll see what kind of designs they can come up with too. Um, if you have a pet at home or some animals, maybe you can look for inspiration for animals around you. Maybe you can use an animal from your imagination. Again, we're going to use some geometric lines. We're going to use some patterns. And we're really, most of all, going to have fun coming up with some interesting shapes. Once you've done it um, in pencil, 
um, then you can go ahead and just use the marker pen to fill in. Now I'm going to go ahead and trace around my pencil marks in the marker pen. Filling in the little animal here. And I think we are nearly finished with this. Maybe we could just do a little bit here on the shell. And I think I'm happy with it. So two of my children came to help again today, Maya and Danny. Danny, do you want to show us what kind of art you've been doing today? Sure. Um, this is zigzagged pattern lines, and this one is two fish in a fishbowl. Oh, yeah. I'll put that closer to the camera so you can see. Very nice. And what have you been working on, Mike? Uh, I put a deer in the center. Oh, yeah. Let me take that a bit closer, too. Really pretty. I like the way that Maya used all the outside of the paper to do some designs. Excellent work. And here are some other ones that we made, too. You can get some inspiration for your work that you'll do today. Today for our art materials, we used a black marker pen. Um, if you have um, some of these Sharpies are kind of fine tip and other ones have a bit of a thicker tip. I don't know if you can see that with the camera. Either is fine. Um, and the other thing I wanted to let you know was the traditionally they use the yucca plant to make paintbrushes. So they actually painted them and they used the yucca plant. They sort of shredded the end to, um, to do their paintings with. Kind of interesting. Okay, well, thank you very much, Maya and Danny, for coming to help again today. And enjoy your art.